everybody. I hope you're having a great day. This is Kennedy from Kids Acting and today I'm going to show you how to do a British accent. Before we jump into learning the accent, I would first like to acknowledge that there are many, many different dialects or ways of speaking underneath the umbrella of what we think of when we think of a British accent. Um, just the same way as here in America, even though we are all one nation, we do not all have the same accents. People from Texas speak differently than people from Florida, who speak people differently from people who live in New York, who speak differently than people who live in California. Um, even though we are all one nation, we do have many different dialects, many different ways of speaking. Um, with that being said, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do the RP British accent, also known as the Received Pronunciation British Accent. This means that this is the, the typical British accent that we think of. Um, also known as the King's English, it can sometimes uh, show that a character has um, maybe a higher standing than the other characters or that, uh, that this character is smarter than the other characters. Um, for our purposes of using it, this is just a good old British accent um, that will easily come across on stage and that can be pretty fun to trick your friends with. So let's jump into it. What note about a British accent is that British accents are more musical than ours. Um, if you'll listen while I'm speaking, you can notice that my accent has a lot of hard stops in it, such in words like accent, stop, here, there. Our R sounds in our, uh, in our mouth placement are much more forward than they are in a British accent. Um, one of the most notable differences about a British accent is that they don't really say their R's um, in words like never, or girl, or work, or word, the R is not really said. Um, and as with all tips that I'm going to give you and all rules that I'm going to give you, there are exceptions to those, um, such as the word hairdresser, hairdresser. You'll notice I didn't say the R in hair, and I didn't say the R at the end of dresser, but I did say the R right after the D. When looking through your script and trying to figure out which R's to cross out or which ones not to say, you really have to think about whether if you leave out the R, is that going to change the meaning of the word? So if we left out the R in dresser at the beginning, dressa, it would be dessa, which doesn't make any sense and isn't a real word. <laughs> so when going through your script, try to think about that. Um, it's almost always you can find words that have hot R's in them, like cheddar. Most words that end in R or that have an R in the middle of their sentence um, will be dropped. Next tip I have to give you is probably my favorite. It's called the liquid U. So this is for use in for use in words that have a U in them, but do not make the a uh sound. Like catch up, you would not be able to use this trick for. But words like costume or issue or duty, you would be able to use this trick for. So the way that I like to I like to think about this trick is that if I think about taking out the letter U and writing in the word Y O U in my head. That helps me figure out the mouth placement for that sound. Um, so like costume, costume would be costume, or words like duty would be like duty. Um, this one's a little bit harder to get if you're a little bit younger. Um, and this is kind of for uh, a, a more advanced, advanced uh, British accent. If you've been practicing it for a while and you're looking for a way to make your British accent a little bit more realistic, trying to put in the liquid U would really help show you is another hallmark of a British accent called the long A. So there are three rules for the long A. This is before S sounds, before S sounds, and before voiceless THs. A voiceless TH is like in the words bath. When you're not saying the TH like therefore, but like bath or math, when your tongue hits the bottom of your teeth and makes that sound, where almost no sound comes out, that's called the voiceless th. So you'll use this trick with the long a is for voiceless th words. Um, so like bath, the a in bath, see how my mouth went really wide when I said that in my accent, bath, in the British accent, it'll turn long. So it'll make my mouth go a little bit longer when I say it. Bath, or pass, or glass, or lost, off. Words like that will contain the, the long A. Like I said, before F sounds, before S sounds, and before voiceless TH sounds, you'll use this trick for. What I have to show you is about all sounds. This is found in words like almost, all, always, Paul, off, 
words like that. Um, if you'll notice when you, if you say it out loud, um, you feel a little bit of a stop in your throat. Um, this is called a guttural sound, um, sounds that are made lower in the throat. So um, when I say almost, you can hear that between the A and the L, there's a little bit of a stop there. Almost, all, Paul. Words like that have a little bit of a stop. And like I said earlier about our British accents wanting to be nice and musical, um, they don't want that sound there. So instead of, of saying that, they'll put an A-W between those in their accent. So almost turns into almost, or all turns into all, always, off, whole, autumn, awful, awful. Um, that's another way of getting your accent to seem really, really, uh, really fresh and really integrated into your character. The trick I had to show you is called the long O. This is found in words like no, go, home, over, and appropriately. So if you think about the way that your mouth is shaped, a lot of our sounds, uh, when we make sounds uh, to speak, they can either come from back here where our throat is, they can come from right here in the middle of our mouth, or they can come from right here in the front of our mouth. A lot of British accents are found in the front of the mouth. This is, this is one of those times. Um, British accents almost make an O-H sound whenever they say words that have O's in them. So go turns into go, home, no, over, appropriately. It's all kind of found right here in the front of the mouth. Um, and that's a way that you can make your accent sound really, really uh, naturalized, which means that it sounds like you, is by putting a lot of your accents right here in the front of your mouth. The last tip I have to give you is kind of a little bit of a hard mode. If you've been practicing a British accent for a while, if you've done a few shows with one, or you feel pretty comfortable, this is another way of making this accent sound super naturalized and could honestly almost trick people into thinking you have a British accent. This is called the connecting R. This is found directly in between words that end with a vowel and that the, the immediate word following it starts with a vowel. So in the practice sentence, no, I won't, um, if you'll hear in my accent, no, I won't, those are two pretty separate sounding, uh, sounding vowels and can kind of break the flow between the sentence. Um, so we would put an R right between no and I. So in my accent, no, I won't. And in a British accent, no, I won't. You can tell from my accent how my accent was kind of like, no, I won't. My British accent was, no, I won't. Um, even though the W was kind of a hard sound. Sentences to help you with your British accent. I'm going to say them first in my Texas accent, and then I'll say them in a British accent. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits, and a biscuit mixer. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits, and a biscuit mixer. A proper copper coffee pot. A proper copper coffee pot. Long legged ladies last longer. Long legged ladies last longer. He told a scary fairy tale that was set in another country. He told a scary fairy story that was set in another country. I feel just gutted about your lost dog. I feel just gutted about your lost dog. When I was learning a British accent, um, we, we, uh, Part of our warm-up was to say <laughs> the first two stanzas of the song Modern Major General. I'll give them to you now. It's a little bit more advanced, so if you've been practicing it for a while, this is a good one to practice. You can Google the lyrics. Um, I give you the first two stanzas right here. Um, just like I did with the sentences, I'm going to say them first in my accent and then say them in a British accent. I am the very model of a modern major general. I've information, vegetable, animal, and mineral. 
I know the kings of England, and I quote the fights historical, from Marathon to Waterloo, in order categorical. I'm very well acquainted, too, with matter, matters mathematical. I understand equations, both the simple and quadratical. About binomial, binomial theorems, I am teeming with a lot of news, with many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. <laughs> This is a good challenge. You know, while you're while you're practicing your British accent, I really push you to chat to try this. And I'm probably going to mess up when I say it. <laughs> I am the very model of a modern major general. I have information vegetable, animal and mineral. I know the kings of England and I quote the fights historical from Marathon to Waterloo in orders categorical. I'm very well acquainted too with matters mathematical. I understand equations both the simple and quadratical. About binomial theorem, I am teeming with a lot of news, with many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. 